This is the River Trent in the grounds of Staffordshire University in 2019. Although part of a lush green landscape and set aside for nature, there are far fewer opportunities for river corridor species than there used to be. The river is unnaturally straight. And as you can see from this sketch of the 1877 map, this was not the historic condition of the Trent. From around the mid-1930s onwards, the river was altered and progressively locked into a straight drainage channel to make way for developments. By 2019, much of the in-channel habitat was gone. That's not to say wildlife hadn't recolonised. But mixed in with native species, a lot of dominant invaders also arrived. Large stands of Himalayan balsam are a problem here, as on many rivers. Infestation by this plant not only shades out native flora, but is associated with a 75% decrease in spider species and a 64% decrease in beetle species. It's fair to say that the Trent has suffered under the influence of human impacts. Okay, so as you can hear from the background noises today, we're right in the middle of Stoke-on-Trent, uh, on the River Trent itself. The river, before we did the project, um, it was absolutely knackered, and, you know, utterly devoid of any real habitat uh, and a real challenge. So several years ago, uh, several partners came together to look at uh, opportunities to restore this section of river. Um, the Wild Trout Trust, Environment Agency, Staffordshire Wildlife Trust and several other partners looked at several sites in Stoke-on-Trent and, and uh, Newcastle under Lyme. And here at the university, um, you know, just looking around, I'm so, so pleased to, to see what's been achieved. Um, I know this section of the river really, really well. I walk this stretch all the time. And, uh, you know, I think we were really scratching our heads to start with, uh, to see, you know, what, what could be done to, to restore it to its floodplain, uh, to restore the river corridor itself. We're here at Staffordshire University, which is part of the Sunrise Project suite of sites. Uh, the, the whole Sunrise Project came about through a, a process of uh, opportunity mapping, working with, with partners to identify opportunities within Stoke-on-Trent and Newcastle under Lyme for, for habitat improvement, specifically uh, watercourse improvements along the River Trent and its tributaries. And that opportunity mapping was, was worked on by a, a group of organisations that came together under the, the catchment partnership. Um, including the Environment Agency, the Wild Trout Trust and, and Staffordshire Wildlife Trust themselves to identify um, opportunities and, and, and open spaces really where this sort of restoration could take place. So what kind of features did we want to reintroduce? Was there sufficient gradient to maintain riffles, glides, scour pools and meanders? Moreover, how could we be sure those features would be stable under spate flow conditions? The exceptionally detailed modelling and design by George Heritage and Seb Bentley, who have since created the company Dynamic Rivers, were vital to this project. Overlaying their schematics onto university land allowed the complex process of consenting these works to proceed, with supportive participation from the Environment Agency and the university alike. The message from the university was, let's be ambitious with this one. And so to work. No matter the weather, and with protective measures in place. Life and work continues regardless. So as you can see, um, we've not long finished. Uh, the diggers have only left a few weeks ago and, and the site still looks pretty raw at the minute. Um, it, it won't take long for that to revegetate um, and, and, and to look 
like, uh, like we were never here probably, but already just a few weeks after the completion of the, the underground work, We've had an opportunity today to, uh, to walk around the site. We've already seen evidence that trout are starting to recolonise this stretch of the river to utilise some of the gravels that have been installed and, and, and put into the river as part of the process, which weren't here before. The, the substrate was very, uh, very uniform and very poor. And so we've already been able to see signs that trout are starting to use this, this stretch again just a few weeks after the works are finished, which is a really exciting um, end, if you will, to, to this stage of the project, to, to see that that life is already returning. The Sunrise Project thanks the European Regional Development Fund who supported these works and made the entire project possible.